Dirk Chase Pelser. What's up? <laughs> this is take two, brother. And I, I told you before, you are part of an elite few that has been on this podcast that we couldn't put out the episode due to technical difficulties. But I think it's a blessing in disguise. It's now, what is it, two weeks back or one week back? Just over one week, I think. Yeah, yeah we, and I get to talk to you again for an hour, hour and a half. So that's it. I think it's a, it's a actually a value add for me. So I'm really happy yeah. to be able to do this. Likewise, likewise. I was thinking about it when I I, I often listen to Oprah on her podcast, <laughs> and she would always start with some of the people and go. Um, she has this this garden cottage where people sit, where where she invites her friends to. And then she will say, we were sitting in the garden cottage and I thought, this is okay. We can redo this um, recording because we just had a like friendly visit the other time. Yeah. So that's good. And now we're just a <laughs> bit more comfortable with that's each it. other. And the one problem is though that we touched on a lot of excellent material the, other, the, the previous time. Yep. And I might not be able to remember it, but please... Maybe someone will think, look at look at that Dirk. He's so he's so comfortable. He's like leading the <laughs> leading the interview. But please do feel comfortable and and guide as you want to th- topics that you want to touch on. I'm really comfortable okay. with that as well. Great, awesome. I'll try my best to remember most of it. Okay, <laughs> cool. So I want to start again by just going into a little bit of your backstory, a small summary. Great. And then we're gonna go to. Dirk as a young adult and then the Dirk now if that's fine with you yeah sure let's dig in okay so (laughs) who's Dirk Chase this is it okay so I always love getting this question because where do we actually start Um, is it what do I do for a living is it um, who am I so what you see is what it is i do i'm an actor i i'm a writer i am a life coach and i work in the marketing industry so i cover a few areas to to keep life interesting and all of it everything i do is really something that i love so that's just what i do and who am i i think at my core I'm a lover of people and a creative spirit. So Good answer. I go from that. That's where I start. The The lady that I spoke to last week, uh, it was the day after our recording. Okay. I had another recording and she described herself as a worshiper. Oh, wow. And wow. I thought that is quite powerful and I, and I like that. And, and she she further explained that I mean, worship is not singing in the church. No, no. There's a lot of acts of worship. And yeah. she's a worshiper. And I found that like profound. I love that. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's, a, it's a difficult question. Yes. That is a beautiful Very. answer that she gave. Very. Because we don't know what to say. She th- she's thought about it. And Clearly. I'm, yes. Clearly. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of feel like you put me on this spot here, but it's fine. I, <laughs> I'm happy with what I yes. say. No, that, because you, you gave the perfect answer as well. I think it's great to wake up in the morning and have some way to start. Yes. So, yes. Creative spirit and I love people. How is my day going to look? Yes. Normally planned, but... <laughs> yes, and that guided you to, to your career as well. Oh, yeah, definitely. But Perfectly it wasn't even a plan. It just happened. It really just happened. I never in my life thought life coaching. Like I heard about it, but never thought, what is this? It was moments with just being at the right place at the right time, having the right discussion, and then things happened. So very grateful for where everything led, but it wasn't a plan. The acting was the only plan. That's been a passion since very small. Let's get into that. So did it start from from school yeah it was i've always been obsessed with move with movies um i remember when titanic (laughs) when titanic was out on on it was still cassette video vhs so um we would i have a brother and a sister two brothers and a sister actually but we would get the um the 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 pamphlets from all the stores and you would like kind of 
rip out what you would like for Christmas or whatever. And they would would pull out little snippets of toys and I would like make a snippet of the the Titanic cassette. Really? And my sister once she she looked at me that that day and she said, "If we all have our toys and we we're busy playing, what are you going to do with this video cassette?" And I didn't have an answer, but today I do. <laughs> I know why. Now I know why why that was what I liked. Because movies and filmmaking has always been a thing for me. But it was one of those dreams that I kept. My family knew, but I didn't really go out. You know, in school, they always say, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I just never said, that's the thing. Because I always felt that, no, it's not something you mention without people looking at you funny. And, or and maybe, or, yeah, yeah, maybe laughing at it and... And turning it into a bit of a, a mockery is the right word, because then you lose faith in your mm. own dream. And I had a lot of resistance, obviously, from my father, who was like, no, different generation. It's not going to happen. You don't. This is not going to happen. Mm. So get out of this dream. But chasing its uh, full errand. It's it just it wasn't an option for me. So I just kept this secret alive. And then I went for it when I completed school i think there's there's two types of people um and for me it was the same thing with the podcast you get one type of person who st who tells the world their dreams or their plans that's true <laughs> and that gives them enough validation not having to follow through with it because they mm -hmm. get enough out of everyone like being excited with them oh that's amazing that's going to yes. be so cool and then you get other people, and I think I'm that person. I put it out there so that I feel I have to do it now because people are going to mock me if I don't mm -hmm. do it. Yeah, accountability. Yes, mm. getting accountability, uh, accountability from the from the public, That's from it. everyone looking at that. And that is, again, it's just the internal thing. It's how you're going to work with the response. Mm -hmm. But so you, you felt rather, I don't want to put it out there and be mocked. I'll show them. Yeah. Like a chip on the shoulder. That's the thing. But I didn't, it wasn't really, I always thought it was, I'll show them. And with time, it grew into, I need to show me. Mm. It's now not about the other people anymore. Now it's me really wanting this. Um, I will share with some close people when I can identify that they are pure at heart and that the energy and the the positive vibes that they will give me towards this is going to be real because you get a lot of people that really they they say the right things and they feel so like inspired with you but there is a negative hidden energy in that so i'm very careful who i share what with what do you think creates that the negative part why why won't they just be excited with you and it's normally nothing to do with the other with with me it's it's something within yourself maybe you think i let let's use an example it's, it's somebody who's who might be better looking or whatever puts in a lot of effort in the gym walks past and everybody says oh probably using something mm. but everybody who says it you're clearly not using anything, yeah. not even the gym. <laughs> so normally when people have a negative underlying something, it's something in them that they have to mm. understand why they are being triggered. Mm. And they might say the right stuff and the right words, but energy also speaks. So you do get something from it. That underlying thing will always be there. We can sit here and not say a word, but there is, there is a conversation happening. So it's very important to to really keep what you value most safe. And I'm not saying not share it, but share it with the right people. Be selective about sharing. That's it. It's it's very important because we don't none of us really understand the power of energy. Mm. We have an idea about it, but we have no idea how powerful it is. <laughs> so yeah, if something happens, I mean, I I had an amazing opportunity. So I went to Hollywood about a year and a half ago and met incredible people. And everybody, I came back and everybody thought I was going to go back immediately. And it was a plan, 
but life happened and it's not the plan yet so now i'm very specific with who i share what with because it's still where i'm going and we all have dreams and it's i don't like that accountability thing um that you spoke about so i would rather just not say anything i'll but work will on you it make sure that it's secure and it's 100 percent and then you put it out there or will you just rather do it no i won't necessarily do it wait for it to be 100 percent because i think f- for me i am way too critical on myself so i will read look and relook with writing that was that was always the thing i wrote a lot of things that i just i would read it again two months later and just think it's it's horrible then i'll destroy it <laughs> And then I started writing, um, I wrote a poem and I just thought I'll just keep it there on my phone because my writing isn't really something that I go and sit and think about. Something that comes to you. It happens. I'm busy, like just taking a neighborhood walk or I'll wake up in the middle of the night and I have these words that need to come out. So my phone, I grab my phone or a piece of paper and I start. Um, And then it's beautiful in the moment because it's really a way that I release whatever I'm going through or working through. Um, But then reading it again later, it just feels weird and and you kind of cringe. Mm. But then that poem, I I think I wrote it in 2018 and I kept it. And two years later, I read it and I thought, I'm going to put this on social media just, just to put it out there. It was more something for me to prove a point to myself that I can, I can cope if it's a bad review. And then I got a few um, inbox messages with people relating to it um, and trying to figure out if we have the same story. So to some of these people were strangers and I would literally say, we, I don't know you, I don't know who you're talking about, but I'm so happy that you took, that you could relate reading what I wrote, just make it part of your own story. So I think it's really something that you have to know yourself very well to if you do it the way i do so i cannot always wait for things to be perfect i have to put it out there and then work on it or get a good group of people you know like i to just give said you the some people feedback who, who, on yeah it. the people i really trust who who i know will give me feedback because they really want me to win not just come for me yeah you know a lot of people they want you to do well but not better than them. Yeah. As soon as you surpass them. Until you do well. Then, uh, listen, mm. we, we don't really like what you're doing anymore. And uh, I think it's hard because I think all of us want to have better for ourselves. Um, but it takes work and it takes time. I I love this phase in my life because I'm 33 years old and, and I've, seen, I've seen more than a 20-year-old. And now I have a lot of... Um, either kids or friends or or whatever children who not children they're young adults now but they're busy studying done with school and life is is about to happen and i remember how i felt Mm -hmm. um because i was i was studying acting and i was like i'm gonna i'm just gonna walk out here and be an actor everybody's gonna know me and i'm gonna get the jobs and then you graduate and nothing happens (laughs) and nobody cares even what your dream is and you start you get a corporate job because bills need to get paid. That's a quick realization. It's so weird. But people in that space, you don't know that. And I love being that old guy now to say to these youngsters, just hang in there because 10 years from now, you're going to see why it was hard. Because mm. you get the degree and now you have no experience. So you still don't get the job mm. or whatever the case may be. But it's life. And then I think we look at other people and we see what they do and we go, why do they manage to get it? But another truth that people just don't want to talk about is that everything is about who you know. So your friend who studied with you might get a good job at a big corporate company and you have the same qualification. You might even be better than him. But his dad has a friend who has a company. So it's just easier. Mm. And then you sit back home and think there's something wrong with you and you're not good enough. No, you're fine. It's just the situation. That's yeah. just, it's a circumstance. So, yeah. And the same for everything. Every industry works like that. 
Yeah, no, you're 100% correct. Uh, the business landscape is built with connections. Yeah. 100%. Do you have some insight on what you do when you don't have those connections? Then networking is really important because if you don't have it, you have to get it. Become a likable person. That's it. Nobody's going to um, gonna come and help you out. You have to do something. I love Mel Robbins. I don't know if you know who she is, but she's international speaker, author. She... It's not Tony Robbins' wife. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people think that. <laughs> no, Mel Robbins is a complete individual. She um, started this system. It's called the five second rule. So when, for instance, you wake up in the morning and you just don't feel like you want to start start counting five, four, three, two, one. And then in that time, you have to imagine your body skyrocketing. So when you get to one, something happens in your brain and you kind of feel anxious, I have to do something now. And then you get up. I've heard that like with people lying in bed, That's like it. snoozing the alarm. Yes. So the five second rule is really cool. Um, so I I love her her speeches and everything she, she stands for. Um, so I've watched a lot of her videos. Yes. I've watched a lot of videos and, and read a lot of her stuff. And she, I actually have a really cool story with her. She, um, I, I qualified as a, as a life coach and we, it, it took me about two years after qualifying to start my own life coaching practice because you're qualified and then something new happens and you don't think you're good enough to do it. And I was I was walking to this little coffee container station and there was nobody except me and the barista. So I order a coffee and I go and sit and I wait. And Instagram sends me a notification that she's online, that, that she went live. So I go and I watch and she's busy talking. Um, and she obviously started her live with a discussion with this, not, not even a discussion. She had a plan why she's doing this. And then people would comment and, and whatever, but she was busy talking. And I was one of those people who put in the comments, I am hesitant to start my own coaching business because of quote unquote, why? Um, not even why, what if, sorry, what if? And then the next thing, Mel Robbins reads my oh, comment. Oh, what, what was the, the, res- uh, the what if what? That, that's it, quote unquote, what if? Just what if in general? What if it works? What if it doesn't work? Because both are frightening. But the what if it works is a positive thought and it might get you into action. It the might. what if it doesn't work is the negative one and And then the you failure. just stay where you are. Yes. But also that's a whole completely different topic that we might touch later on. But the, f- the fear of success is also a real thing. It's a it's a deserving a self deserving situation where you don't really believe you deserve it, and then you. I kind of want to say sabotage. I just wanted to mention: would you, you would you say that's where self sabotage comes in, yes. where people like don't pitch for things or tr- or just start doing bad habits, and it's not even them. It's not the type of person that they mm. are, but they they're not ready for this. Not success. ready to accept what is possible and i get that because i was i i also i had all the thoughts so i just put what if and then she she was busy talking and the next thing she reads my comment out loud and she shouts what if what and then she just started she kept on talking with what her topic that she had and she would work what if in there and i kind of thought is there a candid camera somewhere? Because how is this even possible? It's Mel Robbins. Nobody ever reads these comments. Mm. Um, and I completed, obviously, I, wet, I watched till the end. The coffee was standing there getting cold. And then when the live ended, I sent a friend of mine a message who is good with website design and all of that. So I just said, hey, man, I have three days to start to launch my coaching business. So, and I'm, I'm making it three days because it was after three days, it would be the 1st of October. Yeah, that's, so that is a strict timeline. <laughs> for you. I just, I looked at the dates. I saw, okay, in three days time, it's the 1st of October. It has to happen. 
I mean, what bigger message do I need? What what year was that? Was that now two years? Two thousand and eighteen. Okay, that's yes. five, six years back. That's okay. yeah, it's been a while, and I qualified in two thousand and sixteen. So two years, so I did it, and then he said, "Well, if you give me the content in three days, then I can, we can make it happen." So I took a picture and I just, I, I, I made this thing with a three-day countdown, the accountability thing to kind of do it, but not because I'm not a big fan when people just say big things coming. Big things coming is beautiful, but it's so wide. Where do we start looking mm. and when and what? So I said three days to go. And I had a picture with my logo because luckily I've had a logo. So I had that, but kind of, I think I skewed it so you can't see what it is about. And then the second, I would say two days counting. So I would turn the picture so you see a bit more of it. Oh, that's but cool still idea. not knowing what's coming. So the final day when I say launch day, full picture, full logo, website is ready, everything was up and I started. That's impressive. It was it was it was crazy, but <laughs> that's how it happened. So I mean, I don't even know why did we get into the, the Mel Robbins topic. But that is, uh, I'm gonna something. give you uh, uh, just a small thing that I want to ask you. Where do you study to become a life coach or how do you do that? Oh, there are a lot of institutions that you can go. I went to the Transformation Coaching Academy. Um, and how do you get to one of those? Is it like done by a mentor or someone that you follow that then creates a course on this? Or is it a type of a university? It's, it's, a, it's a school. Okay. So you, they have to be um, recognized. Okay. So... I was just recognized by who? By the coaching registrar. So they they are bodies who okay. who also oversee that. Okay. So I was just for me. I started when the coaching thing started. I work with a lot of people. Like I said, I am. I really love people, and I I want the best for them. And I I, I often listen to to stories, and then eventually I thought, I don't want to be a psychologist. Not that I have anything against it. I just. That I just don't see myself as that. But I would love to have more tools when speaking to someone or being in a conversation just to elevate the system because you are going to eventually grow in your own way. But it's sometimes helpful to not just have someone listen, but to give good feedback, constructive criticism and so on. And I started, I, there was a, a guy that I followed on Instagram that he was a coach. So I asked him, and he sent me a few um, like Google links, so on, to go and check it out for myself, um, which I did, but it didn't. I, I just didn't feel the attraction. I'm all about your gut and the feeling and the all of that that needs to happen. And I remember it was so random. I I ran into this one lady that I knew in business, but we we hardly ever saw each other. So I ran run into her and I go. How's it going? What's been happening? And she says, most incredible thing. I had this life changing experience because I studied to be a life coach. And I said, okay, this is funny because she doesn't know what my journey is. And I said, tell me more. And she just gave me all the information and I felt it. So I contacted the place and everything just started happening, flowing. And before I knew it, I was in, a, in the course and you, yeah, you, you have to study. It's not just... It's not just reading self-help books and then deciding you're a life coach. <laughs> that's that's where I'm currently. <laughs> the the self-help okay. guru, self-taught. <laughs> it's good to be self-taught, but it's important to know that you are working with other people yeah. and that it's... it's. it's you a have big to know what you're doing. It is a big responsibility, yes. yes. And you don't just want to talk out of your own experience. And, and that's currently the only thing I have, basically. And it's, there's nothing wrong with that. Even myself, as a qualified coach, I would, I prefer to start and say, understand that a lot of this is my opinion. A lot of this is not necessarily advice. We are busy sharing. It's life experiences. I'm telling you a story. You might get something Take out of the story. Take something from it. Yes. Um, but the coaching, there are techniques that you do, and that's more, you have to really know what you're doing. 
But can, if you can we maybe talk about some of these techniques, like maybe some of the more popular ones, or some which you like more, or some um, which you maybe had more success with? I think the general one, the general one that most people know about is NLP. It's neuro linguistic programming. So you go um, into a comfortable state and you get guided back into your timeline to um, deal with certain basically things into your memory into your memory yes it's going back into your memories and yeah it's a there's a whole system that guides you so i don't want to bore anybody with that but it's 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 a it's a very nice it's an it's an incredible system um you you deal with that and then you can see in time how things don't affect you that used to affect you um so what are you basically trying to do by taking someone through this NLP session? Is it a session? Mm -hmm. A couple of sessions? Yeah, a couple of sessions. So you want to basically go back into the memory to change their perspective on some of the things that has happened yes. to them. Yes. Because it's that healing. determine how they feel going forward. Going forward. When anything connects to that type of situation. Yes. Because you don't want to... Um, you want to heal the situation, but we don't lose the memory. But you don't want that that traumatic experience to constantly come back and haunt you. So you wanna you wanna still learn something from that yes, experience. Yes. So oftentimes, this is just an example. It's not necessarily people who actually went for coaching or therapy. Maybe they did, but people who went through serious trauma as a kid, they um, can now stand and openly tell you about things. But years ago, it was hard for them. But with, couldn't speak about couldn't it. Couldn't speak about it. But with the work, the, the the healing and everything, it's now easier to to talk about it. They just don't. The connection is different. If that makes sense. Mm. What would you say about like my motorcycle accident, which I had? I've thought about it a lot, a lot of hours, mm -hmm. trying to figure out what exactly happened. Um, and, and I've heard that your brain deletes certain pieces of trauma to protect you. That's true. It doesn't mm. delete it. It just keeps it, it In blocks it out. Separate folder. Mm. If um, you want to go into um, hypnosis, you'll probably be able yes. to access but that. What would you say about that? Would you, would you suggest that? Or would you say, listen to what your body is telling you. You don't really want to go there and it's protecting mm. you for a reason but i feel like especially especially where i'm at now i would i would just like to to know what happened yeah. and then it would probably make a bit more sense listen it wasn't some type of crazy thing intervening it was just you physically didn't pay attention you were looking at this and that's when you rode off the road Again, this this is my opinion. I think it will be different for everyone. Because you might find that you feel ready to go and get all the info. And then getting the information set you back. I understand. Because now you're in the moment again. So how do you know if you need to suggest it to someone or not? So I don't do hypnosis. I don't. That's I have no experience mm -hmm. in that. But when I feel like I, it, for me, it's really trusting my gut, but I wouldn't go, I wouldn't do something that I'm not comfortable with. And I wouldn't guide someone into anything. I would just say, this is now getting to a new point in your process. Maybe you should go see someone like a psychologist mm. who can then on, a, on another professional level guide you through where are you going to be? Yeah, because you like I said earlier, it, you're working with people. So at the end of the day, I really want people to get the best out of it. Um, and that's why I said with you, you are in your journey and you being LaRue, you are. I am amazed with what I see from where everything started. And I, I don't even know you that well, but the, the, the topics that we've discussed and and just a little bit of sharing, I can see that you are actively every day trying to um, figure out and make sense and make peace. And um, we obviously spoke about your routines 
in the previous recording, but I, I want us to go back to that as well. Yeah. Um, but what I'm just saying is you are on another level of, of, of handling your situation. So it might take you, this is just a, an example, but two, three years, and then you go, yes, I want to know everything. Um, and then you know that you have the support that if the, the end result isn't as um, comforting as you thought it would be, that there would be pe yes. <laughs> people to support you. Yeah. Or you'll get to a point where you just go, you know, I'm not, not just yet. Mm. Um, I don't know if you're a Friends fan, but I, there was this episode of Phoebe who then got the address of her father. So she goes and then she sits outside in the car. And then eventually her friends ask her, why don't you just go in? And then she says, because I already lost one, th the idea of a father. I don't know if I'm ready to lose another one if he's not what I think he is. And I think that's just one of those moments in therapy where we want things and then, oof, what if? You, you Again, still have what a if? preset. <laughs> you have a preset thought of what you think you're going to discover and you might be disappointed you with what disappointed. you discover that's true i always think when it comes to closure try to get most of it within yourself because you'll for for instance you'll go through a breakup and then you want to ask the other person what happened what did i do the possibility is that the answer might irritate you more <laughs> yeah. it might irritate you more Applying for a job, not getting the job. Now you go through effort finding out why didn't I get the job. You get an answer that irritates you. So you did it. Don't sit with closure. You just sit with an added irritation. Whereas you could have just said, you know what? Clearly, this is not for me. Do you think there is a space for like, uh, like criticism on, on certain aspects, mm -hmm. be it personal, be it business? Yes. And is it, is it just... There's different ways of doing it and different people to ask to give you criticism. Yes, but you you will know when people are, are telling you the truth, when you know the truth. If you are willing... Okay, but that also takes years for, for most of us. When you are willing to go to the mirror first and look in the mirror and go, what, did, what was my role in this? You know, was the interview horrible because I messed it up? Was I too cocky? Was I too confident? Or did I not know what I was doing? Because people mm. will pick up on that. But so if you're willing to start in the mirror and go deep and honest and honest and then go, OK, so let me call this guy and really ask him because I'm ready to face the truth. Do that. Yeah, I've seen like even with doing I, I need to stop myself sometimes <laughs> doing a journal. I need to stop myself and ask myself, are you being honest now? Or are mm. you just writing something because you think someone might find it in the future and it needs to look nice and it needs, it needs to, to look, to look nice. good. It needs to look like you have everything sorted. Yeah. No, and you should collect yourself. A story. <laughs> yeah. And actually you're saying, why am I even doing this task? What's the reason for that? Mm. And what certain aspects do we need for this thing to help me? Yeah. And basically doing a journal or doing that, that thoughts, going through your thoughts and really assessing yourself. You need honesty in that one. You do. Without honesty, it's useless. It's, and, and why would you not be honest with yourself? I think because you want to elevate what you think of yourself by describing yourself as better than you are. But then make sure that you are busy with affirmations. And <laughs> cause that, yeah, that's an affirmation. That's where you want to do that. You, yes. you want that in an aff aff when you're busy with affirmations. But when you have an honesty journal, that's what you... Uh, so just the headline is different. <laughs> the headline is different because it's a different okay. topic. Okay. It is, and, and you'll feel it. Mm. That's the funny thing is you will feel it. Unless you are a narcissist, you will feel it. Yeah. Narcissists won't. Yeah. But if you are not one, you will feel I'm busy messing up myself. I'm busy writing a story. This is not me. I don't like the color blue, but I'm writing blue is my favorite color. No, you can feel you're messing around. Do you think narcissists know that they're narcissists? Obviously not. <laughs> <laughs> so how would Obviously I know if I'm not. one? 
<laughs> so I think everybody has an element of narcissism in us for survival. Yes. But I think if you have any sort of conviction within yourself when you feel, mm, I'm busy manipulating people. Mm. If you know you're busy manipulating someone, because you also know when you know. Yeah. Then just double check. But I think if you're aware then you are probably not a full-on narcissist because you're aware of what you're doing. Whereas narcissists just, what are you talking about? That's not what I'm doing. I don't, mm. I cannot believe this is the way you feel about this. Yeah. <laughs> I've had some of those conversations and, and then I think, where are you living? You're living outside of reality completely. And they probably think, where are you living? Yes. Yeah. But how crazy is that, that we experience the same situation so much different? Yes, but also that's not even just narcissism, that's people. If I tell you that I love you, I have a certain intensity of how I mean it. Mm. And you, on the, the receiving end, you have your intensity of how you receive it. It's not the same. And also I have the, the memories of previous people who've told it to me. That's and it. that creates... The thought that I now know because you're saying yeah. that to me. Yes. Because yeah. what does it mean to you? It's your definition yeah. of what it should be. But yeah. it's just your conditioning system from the day you were born. Even before then. All the feelings that you experience. So that's why a lot of things get lost in translation. Mm. But it's, it's, it's life. We don't have to. I don't think we have to worry about that too much because you'll go crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I think so as well. <laughs> Some things it's they should just be. Already. They should just be. We all struggle. A lot of us struggle with overthinking. Yeah. And I think it's because we pay too much attention of what the other person might feel. What is the, what is the solution to overthinking? Oh, I wish I knew because I'm still trying to get to it. But what I do is when I have thoughts, I do now more recently ask myself, is this your story? Is this the real story? Because I always want to try to remember the three. It's your, your version, my version, and the truth. So then being an overthinker, I already go, okay, but what? it, it doesn't really matter what option I choose. It's going <laughs> to just explode into that direction as well. Mm. But it's necessary for me to just check my thoughts. I think that's the big thing. That's where you can start. Check your thoughts. It's those shampoo fights. You've heard about the shampoo fights when mm. you're in the shower and you go, and then she said this, and then I said this, and the shampoo bottles just clap because they're the audience. <laughs> <laughs> so you have your shampoo fights, and when you have those, you need to go, okay, am I being ridiculous? Is this even going to happen? Or did this even happen? No, mm. so stop it. Get a new song into your head. <laughs> yeah, I, I think people just have their... They, they create their own story because they want to feel better. And I don't I know if that it, it doesn't work. Because mm. telling yourself that lie is not making you feel better. It's not creating anything positive for the next situation which you might be in. Mm, You're not, not learning growth. anything. It's not the growth, exactly. But when you now said something about your journal, because I really want us to touch on that. Because you have a beautiful way of how you lay out your journal. Mm. And I would really love it if you could share that again, because I will. there's I will. a lot of there's, there's there are so many tips in that that I think people really need to do. OK, I've shared it a lot and I will. I, I actually have like a small template, which I should just put on my page and people can download it and use it themselves. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. See, so that's how you get people. <laughs> <laughs> Life coach. <laughs> I have a small A5 page. And I know for my daily life, I need to have certain things that I do, physically do. It's not thinking about it. It's not speaking about it. It's not writing about it. I need to do certain activities because I know when I do these activities. And, and these are things that I have put together with my self-improvement journey. Mm -hmm. And the one other big reason why I have these activities is I I wanted to get off all of my medication. Okay. They so prescribed that's a side note question. These activities you started after the accident. Yes. Okay. So it wasn't the the 
version before? No. Okay. Not at all. Okay. Awesome. The only thing that I did off of these things was uh, gym mm-hmm. and a little bit of sauna, but I didn't know why I liked it. Okay. I used that makes to, sense. I used to train at the gym and mm-hmm. then go sit in the sauna for 10 minutes. And I just felt, oh, I like this. Mm, felt good. Yes. <laughs> But then I realized after my accident with a lot of pain, a lot of, um, a lot of issues in my body, mm-hmm. getting prescribed medication for everything and the amount of symptoms that you get from that, negative symptoms in your body. I wanted to take that away. And I know that meditation and um, a lot of thinking about things can help it, mm-hmm. but I want a physical change. And I know that when I step into a sauna for between 15 to 25 minutes at a certain temperature, which is about 80, 80 degrees, about 175 Fahrenheit. Wow, that's hot. You need 66 minutes of this per week okay. to be optimal, to get the optimal benefits. Now, these benefits are, for instance, heat shock proteins being released. That is endorphins. That is adrenaline. That's epinephrine, norepinephrine. All of these things are the feel-good hormones. Okay. So, that is one key that I know I need this in my day to be able to make sure that I'm in a good mood. So that's already something anyone can do. If they don't even yes. do any of the rest, just go sit yes. in a sauna and you'll have yes. more feel-good hormones. And if you don't know where to find a sauna, get a gym membership. I think every Virgin Active has either a steam room or a sauna. Mm. You can get a, a membership at Virgin Active for about 300 rand a month. Okay. So do that. Use that. Mm. The second one, which is even cheaper and even easier to do, but more difficult mentally <laughs> is a cold shower. I knew you were going to go to that. It's terrible. It's terrible. Yeah. And I only feel one third of my body. So <laughs> for anyone out there, it gets worse. It's a lot more difficult than for me. so bad laughing at you when you say <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> it is a joke. So, so it's all right. I normally tell my wife I'll get into the swimming pool at winter. I'll, I'll just sit on the side. <laughs> <laughs> just you're you such know, a dark humor <laughs> <laughs> okay so she doesn't showers. want to join me <laughs> so cold shower is another one and it has the same type of effect mm-hmm. just in a different direction because what you get from a cold shower is cold shock proteins okay. your body thinks it's it's everything is survival your body does things inside your body for survival so your mind is telling your body listen This man has just fallen into a river. We need to give him a boost, like a shot of adrenaline. Okay. To help him survive. He needs to swim to shore. That makes sense. So your body releases a tremendous amount of hormones Mm -hmm. and proteins to save your life. It has it has those in a reserve tank. You you don't use them for anything. Okay. You've heard of people like being in accidents and then they get this tremendous amount of strength. They pick up a car or yes, they yes. pick up an airplane. It's adrenaline. those proteins mm. and, and adrenaline that's being released. You don't get that by doing other things. Mm. You need to press this cold shower button okay. to be able to access them. Okay, so that was a long rant on, on saunas and cold showers. Okay, good. Then there's a couple of others. So, so I have six blocks on the mm-hmm. top of this form of mine. I know I need to hit at least three. It's best if I, if I hit five. Per day. Per day. Okay. Every day. And then you tick it off. I tick it okay. off. Cool. So those are gym, sauna, cold showers, diet, meditation, reading. Okay. So I don't know if you noticed, but there's, there's physical ones and there's mental ones. Mm-hmm. Meditation reading you know it's 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 not things that i physically have to do but you need that approach as well you need to have the combination of both Mm -hmm. then i have a the second piece of the journal is evaluating myself evaluating my state physically evaluating my state mentally and this is now that honesty yes and 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 i've i've 
seen myself lying there. Okay. Saying, you know what, uh, mental, okay. mental, I'm feeling an eight today. And I, I forget the fact that I was very irritable earlier. Okay. I wasn't nice to my brother. I spoke rudely to my father. And then, then you should be able to, to check yourself and say, listen, that's not correct. Mm -hmm. Remember this, remember this. And then you can reflect on that. And then tomorrow, when that comes up again, you remember, okay, no, I'm not going to want to write that tonight. Yeah, true. So let me rather change my action. Mm -hmm. So do you do this in the afternoons, that piece? Yes. Okay. I'm going to tell you another trick that I discovered going through this. Um, because when you're in a bit of a slump, you don't feel good. Mm -hmm. you, don't, you, you don't even want to fill in that form because no, you know exactly. it's going to be a shitty diary entry. Exactly. It's not going to be a nice one to look at And then at you again. just relive it all. But yes. yeah, I get that. But there's a trick for that. So I, I have those. It, it's like two little scales out of 10. And I mark it. It's an 8 or whatever. And I need one word to justify that that scoring. Okay. So emotionally and physically. Why, why did I give a score of eight physically? What, what happened? Mm -hmm. And then I can just say strong. I feel strong. Or okay, I feel, well, or I that's feel, pretty cool. Because now yes. you have to think about the word yes, as well. Because it needs just to be descriptive. It. Yes. Okay, good. And, and especially one word is yeah, difficult. Of course. So what is it that you're feeling that made you give this type wow, of point? Wow, you really peel the onion there. You just go, yes, <laughs> go at <yes>. it. <laughs> but I also made it very easy to do. Mm. Because I don't want to not do it because it's difficult to do mm. or it takes long. Yes, It exactly. must be fast. Get it it's out. It's just another challenge for the day. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Then the the next one on there is a scale for fun. What did I do that was fun today? And that was something that I I never did anything fun when it was uh, a normal day. Mm. So now I'm trying to think of something fun to do or something to enjoy during my day. Because you know because you're going to write I, it I want later. To, I want to write something. Okay. That's good then though. I have a, 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 f a financial scale mm -hmm. with my financial goal for this year. How far am I towards that? The next one is a gratitude one. Mm -hmm. What are you grateful for? And it doesn't have to be five lines or five reasons. It can be one word. It can be one sentence. Okay. I don't force myself to overthink it and, and create things. Yeah. I want to... I want to revisit my day and and think about mm. what 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 was there that I that I'm grateful for. Because I do the same with the gratitude list, and I just want to mention this. I make sure that every day is different. That I yes. don't get into the habit of writing the same yes. things down every day. No, I I, I can't do that. I'll rather lie. <laughs> <laughs> but again, that's just consciousness. That's yeah. being aware of what happened in yeah. your day. So. And you know, like you said earlier, with something fun to do, I'm going to have to write a gratitude yes. list. So I need to look at today. Yes. I have to be present in every 100%. moment. 100%. Okay, cool. Go go ahead. Continue. The next one is needs work. Okay. That's the only prompt. Needs work. Mm -hmm. What should I work on? What, what happened today that I don't want to happen tomorrow? Okay. And then do you just write that down and you leave it there? Or do you write the second thing that say, what can I do? No, I just say needs okay. work, but but that is basically I write the thing that is bad, and you need to do the opposite of that. Okay. And then the last one is what did I learn today? Try because that also creates when I'm hearing something from you speak, I'm looking for something. What can I learn from yes. you? Yes, and that's, that's valuable. When you when you're going in with a growth mindset, a learning mm -hmm. mindset, that that changes your day. And it yeah. changes the amount of things that you accumulate over your year. Mm -hmm. It really does. Now, what I said earlier, when I when I get into a type of a slump sometimes, where I, where I have a couple of bad days, I don't yeah. feel, I don't want to do anything. Then I go into re, do the reverse. I take that same notes and I fill it in the morning. Okay, so Predictive. this is the trick that you spoke about. Yes. Okay, cool. So this is preemptive for my day. How am I going to feel today physically? <laughs> How am I going to feel today mentally? And it has worked for me. Yeah. Maybe, I'm just, look for it. maybe I'm just a little bit stupid and I can trick <laughs> no, myself in that way. <laughs> but I promise you it has worked. It what, will. what am I going to be grateful for today? What am I, why am I going to be mentally strong today? And I want to ask this. I think I know the answer already. But do you feel like it was 
it, it became easier doing this specific thing because I, I I've seen too many people go yeah I'm gonna try it and then by nine o'clock enough has happened and they just say ah oh, screw it all mm. yeah but if you actively go for this yeah. with time you'll it won't be nine o'clock it'll be ten yes <laughs> yes maybe you just extend it but is that is that something that you experience it happens precisely okay. the same way even with filling in the note the mm. first year i did it i would uh, maybe do about 90 to 100 days out of the year okay and that is also the same principle for doing the habits that you are writing about mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the next year you get to do a little bit more yeah now you're doing 150 to 200 for the year and it's the mm. same with the habits you you're learning more from yourself you you're getting to. in the habit and you start enjoying it yes. i think that's the most important th uh, important thing is if you don't enjoy it you're just not going to do it yeah so with this or, whole or, system or just get a good why why am i doing this yeah yeah so your system is beautiful i love that and i would suggest for anybody who's watching this to do that um but then also make it fun make it fun for yourself because if cold showers, it's not is if it's not your thing, just don't do it until you know you can. Because mm. it can become your thing. I also do the mm. cold showers and the sauna, so I know, um, I know what difference it makes for me. Yeah, it's horrible in the moment, yeah. but after when you get out of the shower, even the sauna, the sauna can sometimes I feel like my can I can't you. see through my yeah. eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm so scared that I'm going to pass it's out working. and somebody's going to find me. <laughs> <laughs> and you're basically medium to well done. <laughs> yes, and I'm one of those shy people. So I wait. I make sure that I'm the only one in the sauna yeah. at the gym. I would just skip the session if there are too many people. Yeah. So no one is going to find me. <laughs> yeah. The cleaner later on that see, evening. Yeah. So, I mean, if that's something that you can do, do it. But make it fun for yourself. Because I also do the journaling. You have a lot more steps in it. Whereas I just have affirmations included. Mm. Um, I don't have the tick box, which I think is a really good idea. I just wanted to make it easy and fast because... No, I love this. Having it tedious might make you not do it. Mm -mm, I love this. And, and this is the nice thing of having discussions like this because mm. people would assume, oh, but you're a life coach. You should have all the... No, I'm learning from you right yeah. now. But just... Doing something as simple as a journal every yes. day. I do a journal, but I do it differently. And I love this because yeah. I can add. And I would love it if you put that template on. Yeah, I will idea. do that. There's, there's other tricks as well where guys do like the one-line journal. Mm -hmm. It's a specific book that someone sells. And you don't have to do any, anything more. Just one but line. write one line or one sentence. Okay. And that gets you into the habit. Um, I think something that I didn't touch on with the cold showers and the sauna is there's a lot of physical benefits. There's a lot of chemicals being released. All mm -hmm. of those. True. One of the biggest benefits, though, is the mental empowerment it gives you. Because it's something that you don't want to do. You really don't want to take a cold shower when it's eight degrees outside. Yeah. You don't want to do it. <laughs> it's, it's six o'clock in the morning. If you've done it, that's like the, the um, officer telling the guys to make the bed. Mm, Let's yeah. get one success Just going. Good. It gets the ball rolling. You're going to be feeling good. Mm -hmm. You're going to be doing the next one. And that is a, a difficult thing to do. And it empowers you for your day. It, it shows does. you there's something difficult. You've done it. Good, good work. Yeah, Let's and do in the, the next long one. Run, you, you, it's small, small wins. We forget yeah. the small wins. The small wins are, in my opinion, more important than the big ones. Yeah, because it's big. the small ones that keep you going. Hundred percent, and yeah. it and it builds the person. Mm -hmm. All of these small habits that you do is building the person. So they they talk about building a, a mountain with layers of paint. Oh yeah, it's wow, these small yes. things that you add one on top of the other, just evidence of the next, mm -hmm. evidence for the next. But you have to write this down because you forget. Mm. If you're not present, if you don't reflect of your of what happened in your day. You're going to miss the small wins. I went through years of my life without ever thinking about the previous mm. day. Yeah, you're in it, but you don't make a mental note that it happened. Yeah. Mm. And you don't, you don't revisit it and think about why did I react that mm. way or 
why was this scenario so traumatizing to me today yep. you you just ah that was a shit day let's see tomorrow mm. and it will repeat itself and yes. you'll just say the same yes. sentence again until you get more aware of what it does to you 10 you years will it. pass that's and it. you'll still be the exact same person and you won't necessarily realize it that's the hard part is i i often take breaks from i, I want to say life um and then a few months later i go back to let, let let's say going out on on a weekend so i would really take months not going out just doing c- continuing with my life but instead of i wouldn't go out clubbing or going to a bar or whatever and then i'll go back and what what what's really sad is oftentimes i see people that i saw 10 months ago still doing doing the same thing and i think you're obviously in the exact place where you need to be but i i wish people would become more aware you know like in 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 our culture or in my culture where i come from with my friend group it's it's a bit of a slur telling someone you know what you've changed you're not the you're not the person that i remember Mm, but it's it's actually yeah Mm. and actually it's the other way around exactly i'm glad i've changed i should be changing every day you should be changing as well yeah that's it so but but it's connected in a bad way you've changed you you're not the type of guy that I liked. Mm. And um, I think reframing that and taking that as a, a positive comment. Mm. Well, thank yeah. you. Exactly. If you say thank that, you. yeah, thank you. I'm so, I'm really I'm so happy to hear, to hear this because yes. now I appreciate you. Yeah. That face will change. <laughs> <laughs> the face will change. It will. Uh, but you're right. We have to do that. Yeah. We have to. And I, and it's it's something that, that that we spoke about earlier, keeping your dreams secret. Um, when somebody says something, why did why is it necessary for that person to mention that you've changed? Because something is triggered in them. Yeah, it's something as simple as, and I often get this because I. It's not that I that I don't drink at all alcohol. I'll have an a, a whiskey every once in a while, but I'm not a big drinker, and it's not that I don't like it. I well, that's it. That's exactly it. I just don't like it. I don't enjoy it as much as other people. And I hate the feeling afterwards. So I hardly drink. But when you do go to social events, I'm always in trouble. Why are you drinking Sprite? Because I don't want to drink. You should just there put must it be like something in wrong a, with me. In a brandy glass or in a whiskey glass. And then you can just shrug it off. Listen, when I started, because we all have our, our phase in, in when, when you're a student and much younger. But I, I went on this detox where i didn't drink alcohol for three months and then i would order um what was it lime and soda because no one will know if it's vodka lime or soda or Mm, it looks the same but i did this for me but it was the 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 external irritation was too much that i did that i felt like i needed to lie about what i'm drinking Mm. And I, I've grown out of that. I'm now just saying I don't drink. You know, it's a funny thing. And I also think it's our culture. I did. It wasn't last year. It was the year before that. Mm. I don't know if you've heard of 75 Hard. I have. I have. I have a few friends who do that. The program from Andy Frisella. Mm-hmm. And I did that. 75 days where you read 10 pages a day. You train twice a day for 45 minutes. That is one inside, one outside. You follow a diet. You choose the diet, whatever the diet is, 75 days. You drink a gallon of water a day. That is about four liters of water. Wow, that's a lot. And <laughs> It's a lot because we don't do it naturally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you now about those couple of habits. And the last one is no alcohol. No mm. alcohol. Um, and he, he tells the story about he selected a couple of things which aren't that important. The fact is you're committing to something no matter how it's ridiculous it might sound. That's it. And you commit to it. Whatever. Exactly. And one of the most difficult things was not drinking. I went to a rugby game. 
Now everyone's what? giving you so much trouble for not drinking. That's it. It's and just <laughs> our culture. <laughs> and someone actually asked me the other night, last week, they asked me, are you allowed to at least have one drink? And I said, <laughs> I'm allowed to do whatever I want. Yeah. I don't, just don't want to. Oh, are you going to go to gym after this? No, I'm going to go to my house and chill on the couch. So there's no reason for mm. me. There doesn't have to be a reason for me not to want to. I just don't want to. And then respect needs to kick in. But I mean, again, but do you think that just comes with, with knowing yourself and yeah. being comfortable in your skin, being comfortable, being comfortable, it takes time. It's not just going to happen overnight, but it's setting boundaries. And we always wonder or think about it that if you set boundaries, it's for everyone. It's no, the boundaries, it, it's purely for yourself. You have to set boundaries so that you know why you're doing what you're doing. The rest has to follow. Mm. I mean, this also, I, I, I did this detox in 2018, um, January, which is great because that was the year that I, that same year that, that I started my business, but I just wanted to do it. I came back from a December. I saw a picture where I was a little bit chubby and I thought, mm -mm, this is, I'm done with this look. <laughs> So I'm just going to do a detox to get back into shape. And it grew from there. So I'm not as irritated anymore that I, as I was in 2018 to now. I mean, it, it's been six years, but people have also gotten to know. Like you'll sit in a group of people and someone will say, why aren't you drinking? And now other people on my behalf would just go, oh, he doesn't drink. Mm. Great stuff. Thank you. Thank you for my people. <laughs> You have to eventually get to a point where everybody knows. Mm. It's just what it You've is. You've explained yourself enough times. Yeah. So, I mean, that helps. But it's true. It's, it's getting to know yourself and being on that journey to... I mean, why are you here? You didn't, you didn't come for everyone else. How often do you challenge yourself? Ugh, every day. Like, Not in, what way, in, in what way would you do it? Um, maybe I shouldn't say every day, every day. Yes, I do have challenges where I, th where I th get a thought and that's part of the overthinking where I think, okay, I got to get, let this go or just going to the gym and, and leveling up on, on, on weights or whatever. But when something happens, um, I'm going to use this because this is a very relevant example for myself. I constantly want to grow in, in who I am and what my, my, cause I want myself to align with my business. And because because I kind of feel like being an actor and coach, you're kind of your own brand. Yes. Um, so as soon as I sit, I have a moment where I sit and just have a coffee by myself, which happens a lot. I get that moment of I'm not where I want to be. And then the questions start. And that's when I what should I change? What needs to change? What am I not doing? Because why am I asking this question? Mm. And something um, so. On my bio, I do have that I'm a writer because I've written, I've I've I've, I've written scripts. I've co I've been a co-writer on 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 um, short films and and I write poetry and all of that. But the aim is obviously to eventually write your own books and 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 so on. But life happens, and then you have to make time. And and we all know that thing. I don't have enough time or what. But I literally just watched four episodes of something on Netflix. But I yeah. don't have time. Um, and the worst part is it was a rewatch because I've seen it before. <laughs> so now I've just consciously, because I want to write more and just challenge myself. I don't want to not have something to write with. So I was laughing just, when was this? It was this week, this one lady, um, she, she sees me every day. So she said something like, oh, you and your backpack. Now I'm not wearing my backpack because I think it's cute. It's heavy and it's irritating and I don't like the look, but my laptop is in there and I realized that if I want to be more serious about my writing, I need to have my laptop with me that if I'm here to meet you at 10 o'clock and you call me and you say I'm stuck in traffic, it's going to take 30 minutes. I have my laptop open, mm. so I write for 30 minutes. Yeah, it's small things taking some of the hurdles out of the way. Yeah, it's just carrying my laptop with me. To get you and your goals closer to each other. That's it. And now it feels good because I look, I open what I've written and I go, oh, I've written all this. So 
now it's starting to grow and i feel yes i'm going somewhere mm. and and that's the thing it's just you know I, this is just one of the examples but that's one of the ways that i challenge myself at the moment i like that i like that and and it's I, I normally think about big challenges like month long challenges. This year I set myself a couple. Um, first one was in January. I mm-hmm. did carnival January. Okay. And that's difficult. Only eating Only means no, no sugars, no carbs. It's really difficult. And again, I think there's a lot of uh, physical benefits mm. for your body, um, but it's more the mental. It's just saying no to something that's easy to get, yeah. even a fruit. I'm pretty sure that most fruit aren't bad for you, but, but that's you're not, not part allowed, of this. Yeah. It's not part of this challenge. Oh wow! So that detox that I spoke about, I, it's a vegan detox. I'm not a vegan. I'm not even vegetarian. So it's just one week long, but oh, that's a hard week. It's difficult. It's yes, I did a, I did a fast. <laughs> the start of start of last month the start of march i did a, a 48 hour fast yes like uh, how difficult was that mm. and um and it's just your brain yeah and and you you start to tell yourself and the thing is you're not really hungry nothing will happen to you in that uh, that amount of time <laughs> but it's just your brain telling you you know what there's actual studies that say you start losing muscle mass after 24 hours you mm. should just get mm. something and I almost did. I told my wife, listen, I'm going to eat something tonight, even though. And then she reminded me, you're going to be, you're gonna you're gonna be, be regretful tomorrow uh, if, you, if you do this now. Just push through, man. It's not that bad. Mm-hmm. Because, again, if I failed on that one, the next one would be more difficult to start and, again, more easier to fail in. Because I want to do, there's a couple of month-long challenges that I want to do. And it's more uh experimentation Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i want to see a month without coffee because i believe 100 percent we don't know the effects of coffee no no. we don't know what what it what it's doing to us and i i don't think it's all bad but the fact is just we don't know it's an addiction it's really just a thing it's just i know if i skip my, my coffee in the morning i start asking questions to myself like you, why do you crave something i feel a craving you know if you if you did <laughs> that with go, alcohol <laughs> if you if you did that with alcohol eh? so you drink a couple of glasses of whiskey each morning like you do with coffee mm-hmm. let's say most people drink three to four cups in a in a morning say before lunchtime now you're doing this with whiskey you're drinking those glasses of whiskey Tomorrow morning, you're going to feel the urge. It might be a hangover or whatever. But you need But taking whiskey. it again will take away that hangover. That's exactly what happens with coffee. And, yeah, and it's, it's just a little accepted. safer. <laughs> it's just an accepted one. Mm. And you can drive with it in your system. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we, I mean, we've created that. We've said this stimulant or, or this thing is fine. That one's not good. Mm, mm, mm. So I want to just be knowing. I want to know, listen, I need to respect that thing. Or I just need time without it to realize what it's doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's all right. It's so all right I would love for that. you, uh, like, just to let me know when you did that month with no coffee. Because um, I've tried and failed miserably a few times. I'm like, no, no, no coffee. I'm I just going to drink just tea. Imagine. And that first cup of tea is horrible. And I just go get coffee. I can imagine that. Um, but I have heard guys, and that is maybe the actually the main reason that I want to do it. I've heard guys that have left it for one month. There's other guys who've done it for three months. And like Tim Ferriss, he's actually a, a coffee connoisseur. Mm-hmm. So he really loves coffee. And he did it so that he can appreciate coffee again. Okay. He said it was like a psychedelic experience after wow. being off it for a month. Serious. So he got more appreciation for it because being mm-hmm. off of it. Okay, okay. So something that we mentioned last time, and I think it's important for other people to also know, was, and it, it, I'm just mentioning it because it was also part of your routine, um, the breathing techniques. Yeah. The Wim Hof breathing techniques. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a big fan of those. Um, 
and it's quite weird to do. I mean, we're, we're always breathing. That's it. And and if you if you tell people that it's like they think you're like a monk or something. Yeah, it's weird until you do it. Yeah. And then you feel, I get high. Yeah. I get high on my own breathing. Yes. And people laugh when I say this, but it's the truth. Yeah. And I'm sure we all have a different experience, but I literally do that breathing exercise of his and within minutes my eyes are closed i normally do it in the evenings when it's dark and it's i know nobody's gonna look for me or interrupt me or whatever so then it's lights out it's it's pitch dark but i within minutes there's this blue light that just it 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 fires up my entire vision with closed eyes and it feels like my my it literally feels like my soul is leaving my body and i think it's incredible i don't have to take anything for yeah it. it's an <laughs> amazing experience and there must be healing in it obviously yes so because you're ox- oxygenating all your cells yeah because we breathe shallow we mm-hmm. breathe very shallow and that is i believe a big reason why we feel the amount of anxiety that we feel because we are not we like basically being starved of oxygen the whole time that's true and that is just a good practice to oxygenate your body you know you you die when when your arm is cut and and blood leaves your body you don't die because of the blood leaving your body you die because the oxygen that is being carried by your blood is not going to your brain and that's why you die so we're not we're not breathing optimally Mm. that's why have you you've heard of runners high mm-hmm. and there's there's a certain part of it because it's of the repetitive nature of the action that you're just doing but it's also the fact that you're breathing in so much better yeah and you yeah. get into that repetition of inhaling deeply and that's, that's that is a big reason why people get addicted to that type of things Mm-hmm. Because it forces you to exactly. breathe properly. And even people who don't like to gym or have a, a more difficult time, I would always say just start by walking around the block. Because mm. I do believe that our bodies are like a car. And if it's going to stand, it like, you know, rubber perishes and fluids get all they're saying, chunky. They're saying shit looks for shade. <laughs> anything that's just standing in the shade it goes to shit i love that so <laughs> so then I'm, i i always just say listen if you have you have to take your car around the block to mm. get the fluids going and yes. the same is with your body take your body around the block just to get the the oxygen flowing and the blood flow and it's a it's one place to start and even if that's all you do but just do that at least yeah this is really like a repetitive a repetitive um, talk on my podcast. I speak about this with everyone and everyone has l- the same conclusion that mm-hmm. you're giving now. Just do something active. It will really, it will change you mentally. It will change you mentally because that's where it comes in where you have to understand that everything is energy. Mm. Your thoughts are energy. Everything mentally is energy. Everything you do physically is energy. We spoke about that also the we other did. day. We did about uh, I'm busy listening to Joe Dispenza's book and he described to me and that was really a difficult concept for me to grasp Mm -hmm. because we think a lot of people say you attract things with your thoughts and I couldn't understand that because I didn't think the two are made of similar things a thought is just in the air it's just like Mm. it's nothing it should mean nothing and the stable is in a physical state so this is different Mm -hmm. but then i learned if you look at this at an atom level it's energy Mm -hmm. even deeper than the atom level yes split all of that yes if you if you look at the smallest particle Mm. molecular level it's energy if you look at thoughts it's also energy it's the same thing and and i think it's so that's basically just education Mm. if you educate a person on this it makes more sense and then they know okay i should implement it in this Mm -hmm. way because that's how it works yeah a lot more makes sense when you understand that Mm. um why you will think about someone before you go to bed just wonder how they are tomorrow you happen to run into that person that's happened to me so many times and i know oh manifested something there last Mm. night 
there was a good energy charge to that thought. <laughs> do, you, do you use that as well and think, okay, let me think of this thing that I, that I need or that I want in my life? Um, I do, but I also keep in mind that it needs to be for the greater good. If that yeah. makes sense. The greater good, because if I just want to see you and it's going to mess up your life, let's not. Yeah. So something that I, that's part of my life and my belief systems, I always go with God's will be done. So, but I would like to, you know, buy a new car. God's will be done. Because if it's not the right time, mm. I'd like to do another podcast with you. God's will be done. You're going to invite me. Yeah, that's that's why the, the sound broke. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. You I manifested I, honestly, it. Because <laughs> we had such a good session. And, and I, I think obviously everything happened. And I think a lot of it probably just needed to be said between the two of us. Mm. It was okay to be out in the open. But for that moment, it was more of a us moment connecting mm. and um, just establishing what this is. Um, but yes, I think, I think you have to be very aware of your thoughts. You are, it's cause you're having, you're in control, somewhat in control of your own energy. Um, and this is what we've basically been talking about the whole time is where are you going with your life? Um, yeah, we don't know where we're going with our lives or we think we do, but get more information on how energy works and how it affects you and how it affects your day you'll see it getting easier. You will understand how vibration works and why a low vibration is not uh, like ne negative emotions. M most of them have a low vibration, so it's very easy to attract. Whereas positive it is It doesn't higher. take that much energy. No, it doesn't. It's easier to just get angry in traffic. It's easier to, to get upset about anything and rather just put go into the blame state and, and I hate this and this is it's the country and it's this person and that. But when you have to really sit with the situation and think about it, you go, OK, wait, it's it takes time, it's effort. I feel weird because why am I getting all positive with myself right now? This is now when you start, when you get used to this, this it becomes more more easy and natural. But it's that it's that moment. And I often sit in meetings with a lot of negative people um, and they are thankfully unaware that this is what they're doing. But I hope that they could become more aware because I'm sitting there and I'm listening and you try to engage with them to make it a little bit more positive. But it's so that that thing is so true that you um, you become the, the five people that you spend your time the with. average. Because they they do overpower you in some way. It's hard to stand up. You can. It, I've, I've been in a position where I changed the, the setting completely. But I want to say in my mind's eye when I'm in a meeting like that and people start, it's like I can literally see this dark cloud coming closer and trying to get over us. And that's when I when I see this cloud Obviously, it's in my mind's eyes and nobody knows what's going on in my head. But immediately when I see these, this rumbling, getting closer and approaching us, I start with little, I just really try to get this because as much as it goes positive, I see the clouds go away again. Mm. Um, maybe that's just the creative in me that has to see things in a different way and pictures and, and feel and give energy life. But that's what we need to do. We need to, we need to be aware because mm. otherwise you'll just... You'll just become part of the the problem. And I think something that we something that I really wish all of us would understand is that we all connected. Everything is connected. Um, and if we just think better, positive thoughts, um, solution driven, maybe the bigger collective consciousness will eventually then change the world. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't, I think I, I believe that if I can have a, a, a good thought that hopefully influences you in a positive way without me even knowing you, that's what I like to believe. And I hope it's true, but I think it is because if you have a good intention, and a positive change in life, it's going to affect other people. And hopefully 
Like, do you think it only affects people that are affected by your decisions? Or do you think it affects everyone? Everyone. And how and why? Because I think if I do something with a good intention and you benefit from it, you might realize, like, it's not about me. It's not about me at all. It's about what energy goes out there. So maybe you then have a, an aha moment and you go home to your family and you do something different. Um, it's like that. You, you did a, a, a speech, motivational speech this week. You have a lot of people sitting there in front of you. Um, you never know who you reach and how many people you reach. And I've had it where I would do a motivational speech and I would see that one person sitting there, you know, arms crossed, looking at me like I'm talking the most shit ever. And then that night, that is the same person that sends me an email and say, thank you. You really spoke to me today. Mm. You just never know who you're going to reach. And your job there, it stops there. You're going to continue in your own life. But mm. it stops in that moment because this is what they heard. Now they go. Mm. and spread the good news and whoever receives the news goes out and spreads the good news so i don't think it's just about us i think it's about everyone doing their part i agree with that because you because i wanted to sound uh, as little selfish as possible like, I really don't want it to be me. I don't want to want it to sound like, yes, I go home tonight. And I'm like, yeah, wow, I reached so many people today. I just want to go home in peace mm -hmm. and know that I did my best. And hopefully, and you played your part. Hopefully, my best was good enough for someone else to have a, an aha moment, to have that question of why. Why is he doing that? Why can I not do it? And, and, and we don't have the, to have the same why, but your why is going to look different, but you're going to have an action mm. that's going to change it. And then it goes out there. Like your podcast. I mean, you have your why for it. Yeah. And 100% everybody who's looking at and watching all the different speakers that you get on here, they take something different from it every time. Yes, I hope so. We watch movies and we will both take something out of it. Um that will not be the same but beautiful so yeah no it's definitely it's 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 something on uh, on your end that you're doing and and with your whole story you you have such a beautiful approach with this and i have a lot of respect for you because i know it's only been a short time yeah so the the conscious decision that you had to make and now I'm bringing everyone in, your, your, your wife and your family and your close friends. They all had to somehow tune in with what are you busy doing. Yeah. Because I've been in situations where I would feel really depressed. And then I would have to cancel some people out. Some people who mean well. But they will come and they would want to, you know, help out and have a little, just talk about it. Talk to me about it. No. Go home. Because me talking to you about it keeps it alive. The sadness. I don't want that right now. So it's not about you. You're fine. I love you. Just go home. Mm. <laughs> but for what I need right now is somebody who joins my level of thinking towards where am I going, not what happened. Maybe a week from now, you are the perfect person to come and chat to me because we'll be on the same level. But for right now, we need to be aware of that. So you being in your journey... Everyone plays a part and they, they are right in the right place, right there in the right place with you for you to allow you to grow as much as you do in a short time. And you'll get new people in your life who will just, when the time is right, you, you will attract them. They step in and they don't necessarily stay. I love it. I, I saw this happening with reading books. You would read the one book and it's everything. You love it so much. And you live by it. You make it part of your life and everything. And the next thing, someone gives you a book. Okay, you didn't even look for it. Read it. Wow. So with the first book, we, we just scraped the tip of the iceberg. Now I'm going deeper. I don't dismiss the other person. But that person is not my main mentor anymore. Mm. 
now I, I have a new it part. It was a phase. You played your part. You just played your part. And I read a book. It's called Chase the Lion. Um, it's a beautiful book. And I loved it so much because I had a question in me because we have a lifespan. And I feel like, wow, there's so much that I want to do still. But I'm just one person. And he writes that you sometimes, there's sometimes a universal a God intention, something that needs to happen. And then someone could, he uses um, examples of like planting a church. So a grandfather went to this town and or city and started, but passed away. Now his grandson is running the church. So it was the grandfather's dream, but the dream didn't end. His lifetime just ended. How dreams continue. And reading that book, made me think of stuff that my grandmother did who also passed away and her and I were very close and it was never that she installed it in me I found out about stuff that she did after she was she wasn't with us anymore that I would do something out of my own um, dreams and, 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 and purpose you know that purpose driven feeling that you get and then my mom would say oh you're just like your grandma and when I read this book, I, I had that aha moment. Okay, so this is actually a thing. There is a bigger dream and I'm, this is my part to play. So now mm. I don't have to feel so much stress about how much am I doing. I have the pressure, but it's my own. It's there and I, and I allow and that's where God's will comes in again because I constantly go, just lead. Just lead this moment. Even this podcast, I cannot start it without just saying... You know, Lord, please just be, I'm just the tool in whatever the message is through this. Because I don't want to, I don't want it to, to, to get stuck on me. Because it's, yeah. there are so many people involved in just this. Yeah, so I can go on and on. <laughs> we can <laughs> easily, something like that. <laughs> we can easily do another two hours. Because we've Absolutely. done a previous hour and a half and this is on an hour and a half again. Great, I see. And I think we'll probably do another one. <laughs> we will probably do another but, one. But this one will go out. <laughs> this one will go out. If it doesn't, I'll forgive you. I've had photo shoots done and it's brilliant because you see it on the screen and you go, yes. And then they call you the next day and they format it. This no, before dumping no, that's not going to happen. I, so when you said you were so sorry because you were really apologetic and I, I sat there listening to your message with a smile on my face and I thought, this happens, dude, this happens. Yeah. <laughs> As long, again, as long as you learn from it. Yeah. And we spoke about that. Some things are out of your control. We need to be proactive. What is in your control? The way you react to it. So I'm going to react in a good way. Mm. S sincere apology. Can't help it. It did happen. But um, mm -mm. I'm really fun. glad. And, and again, looking in hindsight now, at the end of this podcast, I feel this one was better. Yeah, definitely. I'm happy with this definitely. one. Definitely. I'm also very, I'm much more excited about this one. I okay. think I'm excited to, to see what the feedback is. It's going to be great. Yeah, but thanks for having me. It's always good. Dirk, where can people find you? Where can they look at your work? Maybe if they want to do some life coaching with you or get some mm -hmm. life coaching from you. So currently in this current space in my life, I don't do one-on-one -on -one coaching because I just have too much going on and it does take time because it's sessions. It's not just one session. Um, and I, <laughs> I have a technical thing that I'm sorting out with my, with my emails, with my, um, actually just the laptop, not even the emails. So for now you can reach me on Instagram. The handle is Dirk Chase. I am very honest that I am taking a social media break as well. So be patient, just be patient. And also, be very serious when you do contact me because I've had a lot of discussions with people who just fade into the mist because once the hard work starts, they run away. It's I just I really want to I, I would love to connect with serious people. Mm. I think they should connect you in the energy field. Yes, they should put the thoughts out there and you will connect. Yeah, there's way. a there's a there's a statement that says once the student is ready, the teacher shows up. Mm. So if you feel you need to contact me, ask yourself, is the student ready? <laughs> yeah. No, that's, that's very valid. Sounds a little cocky, but I don't mean it in that way. <laughs> no, that sounds valid. Make sure you want it. Yeah, but just be patient with me if I don't respond quickly. That's, 
Oké, okay, zo so het Dirk Chase aan Instagram en yeah. Facebook. We, we connected on Facebook. Ja, yeah, Facebook, but Facebook... Facebook is really just a, my personal profile. So I... We connected on Facebook because we have a lot of mutual friends. Uh, yeah. We happen to have a lot of mutual friends, but yeah. I just ignore the rest okay. on Facebook. So don't even try Facebook. Instagram. Instagram is the way All to go. Right. Mm. Dirk, thanks again for doing this a second time. Thanks a lot. I value <laughs> your time. I really liked our conversation and um, we'll certainly be doing it again. Yeah. Not because of a failure, because of just a second, just third a talk. Because we have so much to yes. talk about. That's yes. true. But also thank you to you because you are sharing a lot. I think you share a lot more than you actively know. That mm. helps the people more than all of the guest speakers that you have on. So thanks for that. You, I'm glad. I'm yeah, building, a, I'm building very, a stage. I'm very grateful to get to know your side of the story as well because it helps me. I'm grateful for that as well, being able to tell that story. Awesome. Yeah, looking forward to that. Thanks, Dad.